I'm going to show you how to build loop with the workspace build method, which is a lot faster uh, than using the traditional downloading a zip file. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to loop docs and under the build app menu, go to loop workspace. We're going to need some text from this page in a few minutes. Scroll down to find how do you get loop workspaces. And we're going to need this get command once we get set up. Now to get started, we need to make a folder where we're going to download the loop code. I usually like to put it under the documents folder. And within there, I make a subfolder called loop workspaces. That way I always know this is where I'm keeping all the code. And then I create a folder called the branch name and then a date, 2019, November 26th. This way, anytime I'm rebuilding loop, I can easily look at the folders and know what branch it is and also what date that code was downloaded. I'll show you in a few minutes how you can use that to look at GitHub to see what code has been changed since you downloaded it. Now we're going to open terminal. And a little tip, if you hit command space, it'll open a spot, spotlight search window. If we can just start typing terminal, hit enter. We need to get terminal into this new folder we created. So we're going to use the command cd, which means change directory, and a space. And just drag the folder right in there, and it'll put that full folder path in there to change directories to. Now that the terminal is in that window, we need this git clone command. What this command is going to do is it's going to copy the loop workspace from GitHub with all submodules, and it's going to use the branch called dev. Now, if you want other branches, you can read the rest of the instructions on this loop docs page, and it'll tell you how to modify that. We're just going to paste this in terminal and hit enter, and you'll see it'll start to download. While this is downloading, I will open Finder again. Now it's going to download into this folder we just created. So if I go into that, you'll see there's a new loop workspace folder. And then within there is all of our code files. Now, unlike the traditional zip method, we're going to open a file called loop.xc workspace. This is the main project file for Xcode's workspace method. So as soon as this code is downloaded, we will open that up. Now this is a good time to make sure your phone's plugged in. Uh, when your phone is plugged in, if it's the first time, you may get a trust message on the phone. You may get a trust message on your Apple Watch. Make sure you click to trust those uh, for both of them if it's the first time. Now that this is finished, we can close terminal. We're done with that and double click the loop xc workspace file. This will open it in Xcode. Now Xcode is nearly the same except for one little difference here. Instead of just picking John's, your, your iPhone, here I'm going to pick John's iPhone from loop, we need to pick it from this one that says loop workspace. So you want to make sure at the top it says loop workspace followed by your phone. Pick on loop on the left and then the signing tab. And on all four targets, pick your developer account for the team. And this will sign all of them. And then just go ahead and click play. Now this is going to take about five minutes to build. While this is building, I'm going to show you something in GitHub that I mentioned earlier. If you go to GitHub and just search for loop on all of GitHub, should be the first one in the list. Now, I mentioned I name my folders by the branch name followed by a date. And here's why that's important. If you click commits and then pick the branch that you downloaded, so this is dev for instance, this is going to show you every single update on GitHub for the dev branch. Now, a lot of these might not make sense to you. You can read about them. Some of them are pretty clear what it did. So this fixed building from directories that contain spaces. That was always an issue in the past. 
If you scroll down, you can see when remote overrides were added on October 13th. Now, you'll notice the new nonlinear carb method is not in here, and that is because not everything is under loop itself. That is under loop kit. So if you click at the top, you saw I clicked on the loop kit, then you can click into each of these and look at the commits under each one to see what has changed under some of the modules. For the most part, the algorithm changes should be under the loop kit area, and the main app changes will be under the loop area. So you can see right here, we have the new nonlinear carb absorption model, November 13th. So if you downloaded the code, anytime after November 13th, you will have this new carb absorption model in your dev branch. Now we can sit back, take a few sips of coffee while this is finishing. It usually only takes about five minutes, even the very first time to build from a workspace. Now, as soon as it says running loop on your phone and loop actually opens on your phone, uh, this is technically running in a debugger. And what you can do, I actually forget which tab it is. There it is. So this is running with a debugger. What you can do is if you're having problems, you can use this to debug loop. But if you're just building it and planning to run it, if you just unplug your phone right now, you'll get a warning message in here that the debugger was disconnected. You can just click stop, that'll stop the debugger, then you can reopen loop on your phone and you're good to go, you can close Xcode. 